Good evening, everyone. Long time, no see. So, I um, haven't done a video in quite a little while. Um, I've been busy working on a lot of art projects that um, have kept me um, sort of away from the video videos here lately. But also, part of that reason is that um, a lot of times my hands are very stained from ink <laughs> that is hard to get off. So... I just don't feel like I've had um, video ready hands lately. So um, I've kind of moved away from ink for a little while and I'm on painting again and that's a little cleaner. So my hands are not filthy. But um, anyway, tonight I have um, an unboxing for you that I've been looking forward to for quite some time now. Um, actually back in December for Christmas, I actually <clears throat> bought this little Star Wars Mission Fleet action figure for Patrick as a little bit of a stocking stuffer, and um, it's been carded ever since, but we're both a little just, um, I don't know, we're kind of fascinated with them. There's something about them that is actually kind of neat. I don't know if the other... Um, folks out there that collect think so too um, but we've actually never opened one of these yet um, Chewbacca was the first <clears throat> that we we purchased and I really just liked you know the small stature but how well they were painted and some other aspects about them um, so as the the line kind of grew he was one of the few that i saw there's just not a lot of star wars uh, merchandise out there right now but he was one of the first ones i saw and then later on um we would see a few others that were kind of neat but um it was when this set came out that um we were very intrigued and then added a Tano as well but um i'll start with chewbacca and just kind of walk you through the packaging and um, some of the highlights, and we'll take a look at each one. But, you know, the packaging is nice. Each character, um, single character, tends to come with some kind of um, fairly large accessory. Um, this is Beachfront Barrage. So this is um, Chewbacca from Episode 3. Um, when he was at, uh, on the beach at Kashyyyk with all of these other fellow Wookiees and I can't recall specifically but I do believe there were these types of vehicles in that scene so I'm assuming that Chewbacca was quote-unquote driving one but as you can see um, they're very simplified but they're actually painted pretty well. So, got a scene from that on there. Star Wars Mission Fleet. And it shows the assemblage of the, um, of his, like, single person chopper and each playset kind of has a um a title so this one like i said is beachfront barrage so let's go ahead and open this up Just some kind of additional languages packaging. So, first let's 
get out our figure. But there's very much assembly here. You just have to there's a knot a uh, little knob there that fits in. Pretty much all there is to that, and then am I missing something? Or is that just like where to hold on? Oh, wait, maybe there's some. Okay, these are going to be missed easily. There's some extra little clear pieces that are almost incredibly invisible. Um, and they go at the front here. Wow, I'm glad I looked. Y'all, that would be very, very easy to throw away. These little pieces are a little difficult to get in there. Then he sits like this, like being sort of like under this thing. Ah. So he, he fits in there pretty nicely. Um, one of my little wing things fell off, but whatever. Yeah. He actually sits in there really nicely. He has like little Sasquatch feet. <laughs> but he also comes with his um, classic Chewy crossbow. Yeah, pretty cool. And I mean, I really got, I really got interested in these because of the figures. I think they're neat. They're kind of like, um, you know, I like the size. Um, I also like this. They're simplified, but they're not, um, they're not like Galaxy Heroes. The 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 very tiny little kids ones that are um, kind of chunky for little hands. But look at, it's got decent detail. I like the sculpting. I think, you know, you have a nice shape to Chewbacca's um, face and his body overall is kind of cartoon-like, but not overly so. And I like his little snarl because, you know, he's in battle. So, it's just kind of neat. So the only thing I would say about the vehicle itself is that, um, you know, it looks really good. He fits really, really well in there, but like the helicopter pieces and all that are a little difficult to stay, to stay on. So, um, it was just like, it was hard to assemble. 
hard to stay assembled. How's that? Not hard to assemble, but difficult to stay assembled. So now that comes to this really, really awesome Mandalorian pack. And, you know, after the, um, wonderful, wonderful show that we all needed, um, when I saw this and I was like, oh, especially Baby Yoda and, um, his carriage, I was like, yeah, I think, I think I need this. So this is kind of a little battle pack, um, four full size figures, Baby Yoda and his carriage, um, which Patrick and I have been calling it pram ever since we learned that that word is a very British word for um, baby carriage. <laughs> um, for some reason, that just made more sense. So the back has kind of an overview, and this set is called Defend the Child, which is awesome. So you have all of the defenders in that battle scene, and the stormtrooper enemy, so you have enough to defend, like make your own little Defend the Child set. I think they're really cool and once again I was really impressed with the paint on these um, the details I mean <clears throat> IG-11 has got a lot of mechanical details the Mandalorian even has his jetpack um, all of his weapons his back scar um, armor Cara Dune's got her, you know, arm tattoo. Um, which is really cool. Um, I can't wait for the Mandalorian to come back. Um, I know that one thing that's going to be pretty precious about this set is the inclusion of the character Cara Dune. Um, you know, no matter what you think about the circumstances in which she was removed from the show... Um, her character in Star Wars is amazing. Great character, great chemistry, great storyline. And I really hate that that happened the way it did because I feel like we are definitely missing out in future um, seasons. But the great thing about The Mandalorian is that I feel like they have good writers and they will figure out how to make all of this work. Um, they really were um, such a bright spot in the Star Wars um, um, universe because, you know, we so many people, including me, have been pretty disappointed with the last few movies. So, um, The Mandalorian has really sort of rescued Star Wars reputation. So, oh, let's look at these. Let's start with, let's start with Stormtrooper. These are really well, these are deep into the plastic wells that they mold them into. <laughs> so, you know, he's a stormtrooper. We all know what stormtroopers look like. We've seen a million of them, literally. Um... But nevertheless, I still think, you know, the overall design of these characters, the proportions are cartoon-like, but not juvenile. They're just somewhere in between. Like, I would really be interested in knowing um, the marketing backstory on these, like who they were um, designed for. Um, they have uh, great articulation which I didn't get, I didn't get into with, um, Chewbacca, but they have rotating heads. They have, oh gosh, this hand literally just fell off y'all. Um, but it came, you know, I could pop it back on really easily. Um, moving at the shoulder, moving at the wrist, not at the, not at the elbow. Um, no waist movement, no knee movement, just hip movement. So, you know, for, for basics, um, I mean, I would say basic five, but I feel like basic five has knee movement, right? But, so one, two, three, four. So you got four, right? Yeah. 
Anyway, this looked pretty good. And that looks like we were meant to have an accessory to pop in there, doesn't it? But I'm not seeing what that would be. Hmm. That's what that kind of looks like to me. But anyway, there's our little stormtrooper. Uh, next, let's take a look at IGE. I'm really curious. Gosh, these things are in there really well. They are so far into this plastic that it's unbelievable. Like, I feel like, um, there we go. Okay, his head popped off because of that. So, design flaw. I'm going to go ahead and call it design flaw. Um, I just don't feel like these little parts should pop off that easily, especially um, depending on who these are made for. But look at how detailed he is. He also has that sort of hexagon-shaped hole back there in his mold. You know, that's usually indicative of some kind of like jetpack or something. But look at all of the... Let's see, he is articulated also at the, at the, uh, wrists. But I really like, like, look at his feet and his joints there. The molded and, um, all the details on his hands or whatever you call um, a droid's hands. <laughs> but he looks really good. His head rotates, which is kind of cool because it, yeah, character's head does that. But I really, I really, I just, I like all the details on these. I guess the scale is neat. They're just cool. They stand really well. Go ahead and put Chewbacca over here with them. We'll put him back here. We'll put him over here somewhere because Chewbacca doesn't exactly go with all these. So let's try and look at Kara. The first human face. The first and only human face we have rendered here. Let's hope that nothing pops off of her as I get around here. Okay, so same articulation. Um, they have her, you know, cute little haircut. Um, her um, arm tattoo. Same hole back here. And what I was hoping for is the little face tattoo, but I don't see it. I'm kind of surprised. I feel like that would have been fairly easy to do, but I don't see it. I don't know if that was like a conscious decision for like just trying to be, you know, less punk. I don't know, but your character is a character. I feel like you, if they have it, and she's got this one, so I feel like she needed that one. But the paint jobs are, are pretty good. There's a little, some little messy spots here and there. But overall, they're really well done. Once again, I really enjoy the proportions. She looks like um, she could kick your butt MMA style if she wanted to. There's Kara. These they stand really, really easily and really well. So let's take a look. And I didn't pull out all of their um, all of their weapons. We'll look at those 
Um, and then I'll pull out the Mandalorian special accessories. So, as per usual, some of these get a little bent. So, Mando's stuff is no different. It's so typical with this type of plastic and this type of packaging. And this piece of tape covers like the whole blaster like completely so it's like difficult to even get it out of there. So yeah, like it's really in there. I'll, I'll go over some of the other um, weapons after I've gone over um, all of the other figures. So here we have Mando. So this is interesting. He comes with his jetpack. And it looks like in order to have the jetpack, you're going to have to pop his head off and remove the cape and add the jetpack, which is fine. Um, it's really easy to do. They snap on and off really easily. So that's good. But, you know, he's pretty cool. I like that, um, I mean, they look great together, don't they? They're just a great little set. Let's take a look at his armor in detail. So, um, they really did a good job with the paint. There is sort of metallic sparkle to um, his armor, which is great. Um, I don't think I've ever seen paint quite like this before. His glove paint job is a little bit messy, but overall still pretty good. Boots are a solid color molded plastic. He's got some uh, personality there with his um, armor. We got a spot for his, oh wait, it's, it's filled in though. That was a spot for his blaster or You'll have to forgive me, I don't know all of the weapon terminology, so we'll call it a blaster. Um, that's where his blaster would go, but it's a filled holster, so it can't actually be in there. Doesn't look like we have any places for actual um, weapon storage. But overall, it looks really good. So let me pop this back off here and put his cape back on. Really easy to do. I kind of like him caped better. Just feels more correct. And once again, I, I, I don't know weapon names, but there's his special weapon. Pretty good. It's um, the only one that has uh, two tones, the stock and the metal in the front. It is a little uh, bent, but uh, like I said, they're all kind of like that to some degree. So it looks really good. Let's see how he holds it. Like, I honestly can't remember how he held it in the show but let's see if it this is the kind of plastic that is um fairly um pliable 
So they're actually pretty easy to manipulate things into their hands. So it looks good. Pretty cool. The joints are not stiff at all. They're very um, loose, but not too loose. So, pretty cool. I'm gonna put him over here. So before we um, get to the, we'll save the best for last. Let's take a look at some of these weapons in the package. So, kind of looks like a. Tommy gun. <laughs> Another blaster type weapon. And as you can see, they're all just um, single color plastic mold. Um, all are different, which is cool. And at this size, um, you have to admire the detail. I wish I were more versed in uh, Star Wars weaponry, but I am not, so. They're pretty cool. So, save the best for last. Let's take out the Baby Yoda. Not be, you know, everybody is wild about the Baby Yoda, and I am too. Granted, it was probably the most delightful thing that we, that the world didn't know it needed. Um, so, you know, uh, but all of the other characters are equally delightful, as the show is, too. And I'm just, I'm really looking forward to the return of the Mandalorian and hoping to see, you know, um, a good, strong storyline. You know, despite all of the things that it's gone through. So the scale on this little guy is good. He might be, a, he's a bit bigger than he probably, you know, would actually be. But, you know, overall, the, the scale is really um, quite good for this type of um, character. So, and this is a very um, solid chunk here. Um, the stand is got a removable um has a removable um kind of hover stand honestly guys i don't know what this is for exactly the one in the front maybe i'm just missing something the idea here let's see oh oh and it it does do that it doesn't close completely but it does do that. So I guess that's so that he can like lay down. So you can do like this. Um, it's weird. You'd think they would build it to close completely if they're going to go that far. So he sits in there like that. Very adorable. So let's take a closer look at, at Baby Yoda. Grow, 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 grow. Sorry, I just totally mispronounced that, but yeah. Look at how adorable. I mean, the sculpt on this is really good. He has his little pittery pattery Baby Yoda feet down there. He's got, uh, he can move his head, which makes him adorably poseable. He has those little, um, almost completely black shiny eyes, so, um, it catches the light just, just right. And grabby, like, reaching out hands. 
kind of looks like he's doing a little Saturday night, Saturday night fever pose, doesn't it? Keeping the Mandalorian alive. But he's pretty cute. Good scale. Probably made him a little bit bigger just so that um, they were able to produce him easier and get a few more details in. Because I think, you know, the smaller they were to, to have made him, they may have had to sacrifice some of his some of his details. So the cram is pretty basic, but has enough details um, some inside details there, the little hinges for, for this part. Once again, here's him sitting in there. He sits okay, um, yeah, he sits okay in there. He definitely fits. He, laying down, he doesn't fit as well, but he really needs that whole, the whole pram top to be open. Little, in weird injection mold spots. And this whole thing is just a big chunk of plastic. It's a fairly heavy little piece. Um, it's actually really heavy compared to the rest of this set. So, I'll place him over here with everyone. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool set. And you know, I'll, I'll get all of the weaponry out later. So after we saw this set and um, bought this, um, once again at the time there weren't very many of them out. At least not in our stores. We, we, the, the products have just not been there. Um, especially during COVID and everything. We, we weren't out and about hardly at all anyway. And, um, you know, the, the just there weren't um, toys on shelves. So, at some point, um, more recently, we saw a Sokotano in the same um, line. And... We were like, well, she kind of goes with our Mandalorian stuff because, you know, um, spoiler alert, <laughs> you'll you'll kind of see if you haven't seen it yet. Um, so we decided to go ahead and, and get a Sokotano to add to this. So I'm pretty sure that this scene is probably from, and you know, I Patrick and I have not fully watched Clone Wars or Rebels. So I feel like um, this is from probably one of those storylines. It's called um, Aquatic Attack, and her vehicle is kind of like a, it's kind of like a sea -doo. Um, It looks like she can, like, hold on to it, and it's kind of like a motorized, fast swim kind of thing. And then you can pop this thing up, and she can hold on and stand, and it's kind of like a, a sea -doo. So, pretty cool. She's got her lightsabers. how they're taped in there sometimes because they're a little on the difficult side to get out. So. like she can um, to set her up like they do on the box she can <laughs> I 
and just, I guess like this, and then kind of go, and sort of stand up like that, so. I guess that's like fast speed, like underwater, and then she can just, which is kind of cool actually, the way they did that, it's like a little transformer. Kind of neat. Got little places for her feet on the. Actually has pegs too. So there's actual pegs for her feet, which is neat. I really like um, her. Um, oops. Some of the the parts on these. I'm not saying that. They're, I'm not saying that they're poorly made, but they are easy to unhinge themselves like that came unhinged really easily if you look at the um the hinge depth there it's not very deep so it pops off really easily which can be a good thing or a bad thing but this is also um not as much as the pram but it's it's a, it's a chunk and then I don't know, are these lightsaber holders? Is that what we're seeing in the in the packaging here? Yes, it is. There we go. So the handle goes. Handle kind of goes in there. And then she's holding that one. But yeah, this comes off super easy. So beware if you've got kids who are wanting to actually like actively play with these. I feel like that's going to get lost pretty quickly. So let's take a closer look at Ahsoka. Get her um, lightsaber in here. Um, you'll have to excuse me. Like I have like... Uh, I just got home from work not that long ago and I'm hungry so my stomach is growling. <laughs> but check that out. I mean, I really feel like her paint is done really, really well. Let me just go ahead and zoom in so you can see a little bit better. I mean, the tension to detail on her face is really good. And I love the... um the metallic paint in these I really do have a metallic sheen all of the details molded into the plastic I just think she looks really good true to um, I feel like her skin tone is true to the, its color her head tails are true to their color just a little offsetting of the of the um, paint there a little scratch but um, overall, just really good. So yeah, neat, neato, Rio. I like her. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed looking at this set as much as I enjoyed finally getting to unbox them and take a look. Um, get Chewbacca's stuff back over here. We won't keep him in the cold much longer. Um, I think one of the reasons why I like these so much has to do with the scale. Um, I just think the scale is just a nice scale, especially for like collecting. I like how this scale kind of forced the, the designers to say okay what details are important and they really left in a lot of details I mean look at that that's pretty darn good for this size um, let's see let me grab a ruler here what size are these they are two and three quarters so sorry I'm off camera they're two and three quarters Action figure review sponsored by Jack's, Jack Prince. Huh. But yeah. 
that's a lot of detail to pack into two, two and three quarters inches. That's a lot of detail. So that's one of the reasons why I like them. And I think, oddly enough, they remind me of um, another thing I love, which is Legos. And I was going to share real quickly this set that Patrick got for me. This Mandalorian set. These are, some are real, some are knockoffs, some are um, kind of kitbashed together. Um, but, you know, he, he put this whole box together for me. But, like, they are, that's why I like these. I feel like they fall somewhere in between the idea of a Lego and a full-grown action figure. You know, three and three quarters scale action figure. So, I just think that's really kind of neat. Um, and that's probably why I'm just so drawn to them. But I'll just quickly kind of scan these just so you can see. Kind of maybe compare Lego Caradoon and Mission Fleet Caradoon. There goes my stomach again. And I, of course, don't have a quill, but a quill would be really cool. And I don't have an armor. Oh, gosh. I don't have an armor, but I wish that would be cool, too. And then um, Baby Yoda. Now, this Lego Baby Yoda, he looks angry. <laughs> He's not nearly as cute. I mean, not nearly as cute as Mission Fleet. And then you've got this car and regular armor. So I'm really pleased with these and you'll have to let me know like if you have any of these figures let us know um, how you feel about them and why it is that you were drawn to them because I just think they're neat. I don't know like um, how far this line will go um, but you know or, or even like who's the target audience for these? I really don't know. I feel like they were probably meant to be played with and maybe that was the target audience. Maybe, um, you know, not, I feel like, you know, three and three quarters action figures are really new collector items now. And the, um, the ones for little, little kids, the big chunky ones, what did I, what did I say they were called earlier? I've totally forgotten. But those are for little, little kids. Um, so they don't have any parts they can swallow and all that kind of stuff. They're made chunky for little hands. So I feel like this is like for an actual like, you know, eight-year-old to play with. Maybe that's what they were trying to do. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I enjoyed showing you. And hopefully... I will be back to do some more videos soon. I have um, one other that I may be uploading soon. Um, well, it's actually already been uploaded. We had some issues with it, um, getting it to process some, some time back, and finally got that resolved, actually. So it's a magazine from the 80s, completely different subject matter. But we might be posting that soon. But as always, thank you guys for watching. Um, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave us some comments about what you like about these figures and your experience with them. We always love to hear from you guys. And I hope I'm back with more soon. Thanks.